JBRL suggested Michael Jordan's battle with the NBA over his original shoe and wearing it during games as a video topic. So I thought today we could go over a brief history of Air Jordan, a brief history of Jordan sneakers, at least until the 11s, because you know. And if you're a sneakerhead, I want you to let me know in the comments which pair of Jordans is your all-time favorite? Not only the model, but also like the colorway, the, the package. And next week, we'll have a look at our community's favorite Jordan. So if you want to be part of next week's video, drop a comment, feel free to like someone else's comment if they've mentioned your favorite shoe. So thank you to JBRL for your comment and let's get into it. So 19 84. Michael Jordan was obviously already a huge deal going into his uh, rookie year in the NBA. He was NCAA All-American first team. He won gold at the Summer Olympics going into the rookie year in 1984. So as you can imagine, he was approached by Adidas, Converse, and Nike with shoe deals. But while the other companies wanted to work with Jordan, essentially as an influencer, basically to promote their pre-existing sneaker lines. Nike wanted to give Jordan his own signature shoe line. Um, in fact, in their meeting with Jordan, Nike made their whole presentation around a highlight video of Jordan's slam dunks. Apparently, it was said to uh, jump for my love by the Pointer Sisters. What a bang. signed a five-year, $2.5 million deal with Nike, and at the time, this was like three times more than any other player sponsorship deal in the NBA, so it was huge. And in April 1985, he releases the Air Jordan sneaker line. And the first one, the Air Jordan 1, was designed by Peter Moore. Now, what JBRL 
was alluding to is that the NBA had a policy that stated that the shoes worn by their players had to be at least 51% white and failure to sort of follow that policy would result in a $5,000 fine per game. But Nike, they designed the Air Jordans based on the Bulls team colors. The black and the red, and basically only the midsole was white. So Nike agreed to pay a fine each game for Jordan, which really only helped to build publicity around the shoe and to grow the brand. I mean, they, they even sort of played into it. There was that famous, um, Air Jordan band commercial, which was basically just like a tracking shot down Jordan and it landed on the shoes and the voiceover said on September 15th Nike, I don't have the voice, it's like a beautiful deep voice (laughs) on September 15th Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. On October 18th, the NBA threw them out of the game. Fortunately, the NBA can't keep you from wearing them. Air Jordans from Nike. (laughs) And look, the shoes sold out 50,000 pairs and over 150 million dollars in in sales so after the ones did so well Nike was like okay let's do this again (laughs) so they decided to release a new Air Jordan in 1985 in time for the new NBA season. 86. We're in 86 now. And this one was designed by Peter Moore and Bruce Kilgore. And it had a similar silhouette to the uh, Nike Air Python, which would be released uh, in 1987, the following year. So it had this like faux lizard skin on it and um, basically lines that were supposed to resemble a sports car and and cars and modes of transportation. ended up sort of being a recurring theme in these sneakers as you'll as you'll see in this video um, now a huge thing about this sneaker the Air Jordan 2 was that it didn't it did not have the Nike swoosh on on the upper and that sort of became a, a calling card for Jordan sneakers from that point on. I think it's only the ones that have the swoosh on the upper. Now, the threes came out two years later in 1988 and famously this was the first pair of Jordans with 
the jump man on it. Um, see, got hair coming out of everywhere. Until the threes, the Air Jordan logo was the wings. But now, okay, let's take a little detour <laughs> through the history of the jump man logo. So, Michael Jordan did a photo shoot for Life magazine ahead of the 1984 um, Summer Olympics. The photographer was Jacobus Rentmeester. And he captured a photo of Jordan. I'll put it up on screen for you to see, but you'll recognize the pose. Um, and ironically, so this was before his rookie season, and he was wearing New Balance shoes <laughs> in that photo. And Peter Moore, who was designing the sneakers, he came across the Life magazine issue. Basically, he had Jordan replicate that pose for a Nike photo shoot. And they took the silhouette of Michael Jordan in that photo to make, to become the Jumpman logo. And actually, the OGs, the ones, they had a hang tag with that photo of Jordan on them. The, the Nike version, not, not the Life magazine version. And that's how we got the Jumpman. Now, in 2015, the original photographer, Red Meester, of, uh, Life magazine, he sued Nike, claiming basically copyright infringement over the use of the Jumpman logo. It was tried in a federal court in Portland, and the judge ruled against Rand Meester. So in favor of Nike. Um, he appealed. And in 2018, a U.S. appeals court upheld the decision. So that's pretty much the end of that. But back to the sneakers. <laughs> After the threes in quick succession, December... 1988, Nike released the Air Jordan 4 to the public. This one was designed by Tinker Hatfield, and it was actually the first Air Jordan to be released on the global market. It had four colorways. Black and white, black and cement gray, white, fire, fire red, and black, and off white, military blue. Spike Lee was actually uh, featured in. For the sneaker, he had actually featured the shoe in his movie, Do the Right Thing. 108 with tax. Great line. <laughs> and very famously, uh, Michael Jordan wore the fours when he made the shot in the 
89 playoff against the Cavs. a lot in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Will Smith wore the metallic silver, which is just an iconic shoe. <laughs> um, the grape colorway and the fire red colorway on the show. So, sort of a nod to that. Nike released the Air Jordan 5 Bel Air colorway in 2013 and 2020. The 6s came out the next year. They were modeled. German sports car and Michael Jordan wore the sixes for his first championship with the Bulls then the sevens came out in 1992 and this was the first Air Jordan that did not have any distinctive Nike Air branding on the outside of the shoe, only on the insoles. So you can kind of see the Jordan brand growing basically to an equivalent size, if not, if not bigger <laughs> than Nike at this point. And, uh, and then Jordan wore the sevens to compete at the 1992 Olympics with the Dream Team. And Nike released an Olympic colorway, which had the number nine instead of the usual 23, because that was his sort of national team Olympics number. The Air Jordan 8s were released for the 1992-1993 NBA season. Maybe best remembered for the ad campaign that featured Bugs Bunny. But we still had to wait a few years to get Space Jam. <laughs> then we have the Nines. And I don't know, it feels like they're often forgotten about or like at least not top of mind. And maybe that's because were originally released in November 1993. So they were the first model released after Michael Jordan's first retirement. So he never played an NBA season wearing these sneakers.
and they were actually inspired by the baseball cleats that Michael Jordan wore when playing minor league baseball. With that being said, it's worth noting that the statue of Michael Jordan outside the United Center in Chicago depicts him wearing the nines. I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> I, I live for these facts. And actually, I, I don't mind the nines. I like them. Then the tens came out, but then the elevens. <laughs> so, it's 1995 now. And Jordan decided to come out of retirement. He wore the 11s to win the 1995-1996 championship. But way more importantly, <laughs> he wore the 11s in space. big item on the shoe was the uh, patent leather mud guard. So patent leather was more lightweight than genuine leather. And it also tended not to stretch as, as much, which actually helped to keep the foot in the footbed on court when you're changing directions. It's just, it's a classic sneaker. <laughs> Most people usually rank the 11s in their top threes, I've no doubt. Or I, I hope that we're gonna see some, some 11s in the comments when you guys are talking about your favorite Air Jordan sneaker. And actually, both Hadfield and Jordan have said that the 11s are their favorite from the whole Air Jordan line. I had my eyes on um, the women's low, the, the re-release from 2021, the Citrus. But it was 2021. <laughs> Where was I gonna wear sneakers? My living room? And I'm, I'm not a collector, so I would have worn, I would have bought them to wear them. no better place to leave this video than maybe the peak of the Air Jordan brand. Don't forget to let me know in the comments which is your favorite Air Jordan sneaker of all time. We'll be talking about it in a video next week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you very soon in the next video.